This is the first of a three-part video series on near 2 in vivo imaging. In this episode, we explore the potential of near 2 in vivo imaging for contact-free monitoring of a mouse's vital signs such as heartbeat and respiratory rate. The subject of this experiment is a CD1 male mouse first anesthetized in this induction chamber using isoflurane. Once asleep, it is placed inside the preclinical imaging system. On the left, notice how the Alize in-gas camera allows us to see the mouse being placed. It is simply detecting the infrared portion of the lab's ambient light reflected by the mouse. Naturally, once the door is shut, nothing is detected even though the camera is still on. The infrared preclinical imaging system featured in this video is the IR Vivo made by Photon Etc. It has several distinguishing features. First, the low noise of the in-gas sensor in its Alize camera, cooled to minus 50 degrees Celsius, grants IR Vivo exceptional sensitivity. This camera can detect emissions from 0.5 to 1.62 micron at a frequency of up to 220 frames per second. Secondly, each machine allows for customization each client's illumination module is designed to emit at the wavelength suited to their research. While the detection module allows the user to select between 12 filters on the fly. Finally, the field of view can be adjusted by moving the motorized stage along the Z-axis. ICG is most often used for its near-infrared emission peak, found close to 820 nanometers. Less known is its fluorescent tail, which extends much farther into the near to region. IR Vivo makes use of this second, more obscure property to generate crisp in vivo images. This is not only due to the sensitivity of the in gas sensor on board, but also to the reduced autofluorescence scattering and absorption from biological tissues in the near to region. Back to our experiment, a tail vein injection of 200 microliters of ICG at 1 mg per milliliter is administered to the mouse, perfusing throughout the body. As soon as the injection occurs, the ICG signal starts to appear. Thanks to the optical properties of biological tissues in the near to window, the image quality is simply astonishing. Let's take a moment to appreciate the amount of detail displayed here. Let's have a look at two specific details here. There is this general hasty movement like a spasm. This is the breathing. Also, if you turn your eyes and look carefully at this flickering here in the background, this is the heart beating. As the contrast agent is metabolized by the liver, we are able to see the blood vessels appearing and consequently contrast enhancement is obtained in the heart and lung region thus enabling contact-free cardiography measurements. For instance, if we target the regions of interest, we can extract the temporal profiles of the signal. Doing so, we can monitor the heartbeats and breathing movements without the need of an electrocardiogram. Every time the heart beats or the rib cage expands for breathing, the system detects the rise in amplitude of the signal. If we apply a simple Fourier transform over these curves, we get the frequency analysis. In this case, we got about 278 heartbeats per minute and about 53 breaths per minute, values which concur with published results. Acquiring these kinds of measurements using only optical imaging is a feat in itself. Historically, obtaining cardiography measurements have required such techniques as gated MRI or CT imaging. Being able to monitor heart and respiratory rate in real-time and contact-free opens numerous doors for various fields of study. For instance, it could change how we follow the telemetry during drug tests or other physical tests on a mouse. In addition, all leads to believe this technology could be applied to an awake mouse. 
While in vivo imaging in the second biological window is still in its early stages, it will undoubtedly push many life science researchers back to the drawing board for their preclinical workflows.